Tell us about yourself. My name is Hannah Knight. I'm a current nursing student at the University of Texas at Arlington. I will be graduating in May of this year. I also graduated in May of 2018 from Texas A&M University in College Station, where I got my Bachelor of Science in Health. So you can say I'm both an Aggie and a Maverick now. I've loved the idea of taking care of babies and children of all ages since I was about 12 years old. And I've worked towards my goal of being a pediatric nurse ever since. I recently completed my pediatric clinical rotation at Cook Children's, and I have been placed there for my capstone clinical that I'll be starting in a few weeks. I have also volunteered and worked in various healthcare settings, and my work experience includes being a patient coordinator and a medical scribe. I've volunteered in various hospitals and I'm a current volunteer at Cook Children's, where I work on a medical surgical floor along with the, the child life team. Where do you see yourself in your career in two to three years? In the next two to three years, I would like to have completed a nurse residency program. I would like to be on my way to becoming an ex experienced pediatric nurse. I would like to take and pass my certified pedi pediatric nursing exam and I would also be interested in becoming the charge nurse on the unit I'm working on and getting involved with educational programs at my facility to provide patient and family education. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? I believe that my strengths include organization, initiative, collaboration, empathy, and patient education. I am a very type A personality when it comes to being organized and on top of tasks and getting them completed before deadlines, especially when I have multiple due at once. Um, my collaboration, I've learned and have done well with collaborating with my peers and um, coworkers throughout my school and work careers. I also believe that I take a lot of initiative in the clinical setting when I seek out opportunities to learn and I take advantage of opportunities to ask questions of my preceptor and discuss with her about her experience in the nursing field. I think I'm also very good at providing education to patients and their families and I have a deep passion to continue providing education well, including um, hosting classes and providing additional resources for that. My ability to empathize, empathize with patients and their families allows me to better understand their experiences and adapt my care plans towards meeting their goals. Weaknesses could be my lack of experience specifically as a patient technician in a hospital setting. The reason I think this is seen as a weakness is because a lot of the time future nurses work as patient techs to gain experience in the desired facility and to become familiar with their desired facilities policies. I've also heard that um, you have to be a patient tech before you become a registered nurse in order to fully respect and appreciate the work that patient techs do for their nurses. Um, but I don't think that statement would really apply to me because I have still worked closely with patient technicians throughout my clinicals and help them with their responsibilities throughout my clinicals. I think I've been assigned with at least four patient techs through my clinical rotations. And I already have such deep and utmost respect for everything they do on a daily basis and how much they help nurses every single day. So I don't think I would be unable to show full respect for them because I already have that respect for them. I have also done that heavy lifting with my patient techs in clinicals. I think this lack of experience as a specific patient technician in a hospital setting also allows for the opportunity 
for me to be molded into the facility I'm working for's image of an experienced RN. It also allows me with the ability to grow and continually learn through my beginning stages of being a registered nurse. I also believe that I will be open to changes in all educational opportunities. Talk to us about the value of teamwork. What did you do in your last job to contribute toward teamwork in an environment? To me, teamwork goes hand in hand with my strength of collaboration. I think it's a vital component to being successful in any group or organization in the healthcare field. Um, I think teamwork exposes you to other people's personality, work ethic, and communication style. Being able to learn and work with others on your team allows you to grow and adapt as well as allows your team, or team members to grow and adapt to one another in order to be productive and successful. As a volunteer at Cook Children's, I work with the Child Life team weekly. So on this team, I, or my role is to organize the playroom, clean toys, visit patients, provide patients with toys and crafts and anything they enjoy. And then I also provide parents with opportunities to like complete outside tasks and errands and maybe go get breakfast or lunch or go make phone calls. So I have to communicate with the child life team regularly throughout the day and throughout every volunteer shift to see which patients need to be visited first and which parents need to be offered those opportunities first. And we work together to make sure the patients in need and parents in need get that time. Tell us about a situation in which you had to speak up or be assertive in order to advocate for a patient or idea in order to get an important point across. Okay, so during my pediatric rotation, I had an infant girl as one of my patients. Um, the first time I entered her room, I quickly noticed that her IV tubing was laid across her bed and it was easily accessible to her and she would constantly grab it, try to bite it, squeeze it, move around over it, and it was just, a bit, I could tell she was very distracted and agitated by this tubing. Um, the nurse at the beginning would repeatedly move this tubing out of the way or take it out of her mouth or her hand, but when she did this, the infant girl would immediately put it back in her mouth or take it back in her hand and be squeezing it, and this also caused a lot of occlusions in the tubing which would make the pump beep about every like five minutes so our patient also was having trouble resting or sleeping which she needs a lot of as at her age and for healing so I asked the nurse if we could try to find a way to reposition the tubing where the patient couldn't see it and it wasn't in her line of vision um, at the time my nurse said it was fine and we just kind of went throughout our day in our in our rounds um, but throughout the morning, I repeatedly would go in there to perform vitals and just check on her. And every time I entered the room, she was still squeezing or biting this tubing. And it was still causing her a substantial amount of stress and frustration. And she would be constantly crying every time the IV pump would beep. And it was just causing a lot of problems. So I went back to my nurse again and I asked her very respectfully, if we could please try to rearrange the tubing because it was really, really bothering our patient. And she, it was very important that she get rest and was able to relax. So we went through again, we went to her room again and my nurse reassessed everything and she decided it would be a good idea to move the tubing as I suggested. So we worked together to find a way to make it invisible to our patient. And once we did that successfully, our patient slept a majority of the remainder of the shift and she did not cry anymore throughout the rest of the shift and the only time the IV tubing would beep and wake her was if a medication was completed so I think my communication with my nurse was productive while still maintaining a 
healthy and professional relationship.